Hello, I'm Dr. Evan Lipsitz, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about limiting radiation exposure during fluoroscopically guided procedures. There are several principles that are essential for promoting responsible use of fluoroscopy and reducing radiation exposure. One should always remember that radiation exposure is cumulative and effects are permanent. In addition, different tissues vary in their sensitivity to the effects of radiation. There are several ways that individuals can reduce their own exposure, as well as that of patients and staff. Radiation exposure is proportional to total fluoroscopy time. Therefore, the simplest and most effective way to reduce exposure is to reduce total fluoroscopy time. Several steps can be taken to achieve this goal. When there is a stable wire position, catheter guide wire exchanges do not need to be visualized in their entirety. When repositioning the field of interest, by moving either the table or the fluoroscopic unit, the desired position should be estimated by gross inspection without fluoroscopy and then fine-tuned under fluoroscopic guidance rather than imaging the entire repositioning. When performing cine acquisition, each screening run should be carefully planned. Poorly planned runs add no information to the procedure and increase radiation exposure, contrast load, and operative time. For example, a subtraction run over the upper abdomen without holding respirations is likely to produce excessive motion artifact and therefore a useless image. Because radiation is not detected by any of the basic senses, it is critical that operators be constantly aware of when the fluoroscope is active. Audible and visual fluoroscope on indicators should not be disabled. The next most effective way to reduce radiation exposure is to increase the distance from the source. The inverse square law states that the exposure to an operator due to scatter decreases with the square of the distance from the source. Therefore, as one moves farther away from the source, there is an exponential decrease in exposure. There is a substantial drop in the amount of scattered radiation as one moves to 50 centimeters from the scatter source. At one meter, the amount of scatter is approximately one one-thousandth of the entrance exposure to the patient. For most endovascular interventions, the working distance from the source is fixed by the distance between the area of interest and the access site. For example, radiation exposure during thoracic interventions roughly doubles when the operator moves from a femoral to a subclavian access site. There are several other important methods that can be employed to reduce exposure. The majority of exposure to the operator is produced by backscatter. Therefore, all imaging should be performed in a postero-antero position, in other words, with the beam positioned under the patient. This places the backscatter below the waist, away from the major organs, and in an area that is more easily shielded without interfering with the procedure. As the beam exits the patient, a portion of the energy is scattered. Therefore, the image intensifier should be positioned as close as possible to the patient. This allows for capture of the beam with minimal dispersion. Doing so produces a sharper image and allows for a lower entrance exposure as well as a wider field of view. Using pulse mode fluoroscopy greatly reduces exposure as compared to continuous mode. A larger image intensifier mode, lower magnification, requires less radiation than a smaller one, higher magnification. The radiation dose approximately doubles with each successive increase in magnification. Low magnification should be used whenever possible. Avoid excessive use of high level or cine fluoroscopy mode. This mode should be used only for essential acquisitions. Protective barriers must be readily available and used without exception. The most important of these is the lead apron, which protects the thoracic, abdominal, and pelvic viscera. These are generally available in one quarter and one half millimeter thicknesses, which should attenuate between 96 to 99 percent of the beam. Deterioration of the apron's lead lining occurs with use and is increased by rough handling or improper storage. Aprons should undergo periodic screening and replacement if inadequate protection is found. A thyroid collar and protective glasses are also essential. These glasses are highly variable in the amount of protection afforded and allow for anywhere from 3 to 98 percent transmission of the radioactive beam. A lead acrylic shield, which can either be ceiling mounted or on a mobile floor stand, should be placed between the operator and patient to further reduce exposure. A lead curtain suspended from the operating table on the operator side to reduce backscatter to the operator's lower body can also be used. All persons working with fluoroscopy must monitor their exposure with the use of radiation sensitive badges. The fluoroscopic unit should undergo at least biannual inspection and calibration. Using these simple techniques can significantly decrease overall radiation exposure to the endovascular physician. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health careers, visit vascularweb.org.